Hi there, name's Jake Birdbench. Nice to meet you. You may be looking to get into the wildlife industry at a stony creek near you. Well, uh, you're gonna need a camera for that and a lens. Let's talk about the best camera and lens combination for wildlife videography. Don't take photos on my watch. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. So I picked my top choices for wildlife videography. I have some experience now. I started off with a little Canon SX50. It was it had a tiny sensor, but I got some results. Look at those results. You seeing those? And then I moved up like Sony RX10 Mark IV. That was nice, but it still had that small sensor look and Sony disgusting color science. And since then, I've tried the Olympus, the Fuji, a couple different systems, and I know stuff. I've watched videos and tutorials and reviews. So let's talk. We got the Fuji X-T4 in hand, 70 to 300. This is one of my top picks and all the footage that I'm displaying right now over the top of this is from this setup. For the size, weight, and cost, like it's hard to beat this, but it has pros and cons, like all these systems. So let's talk about the pros and cons of each of these little setups we got. So you could go Fuji XS10, but I think you'll miss that 4K 60p. That's a good setting for wildlife, because you can do like shots where you're talking with commentary, but then you could switch it to slow-mo slightly barely slowed but decent crisp image you miss that on the fuji xs10 i don't think you'll miss the 10 bit much how far are you pushing these grades relax but like better grip cheaper maybe slightly worse ibis better autofocus and most of the features so if you can't afford the xt4 you go with the fuji xs10 but i think you'll want the xt4 and the better battery that it comes with. There's really only two lens options. I got a comment this morning saying like, nice try buddy, why don't you use a better lens for video wildlife? I would have done better. <laughs> you got the 70 to 300, which was that. Decent, it's not heavy. Like I could carry that all day long. You don't really notice it. This is like a sweet spot. You wouldn't want to go too much heavier if you're being real with your life. So this or the 100 to 400, I can't believe how much of a difference there is in weight and price. I don't think it's worth it. Now that I think just for 100 mils extra, we're talking 588 grams for this lens versus 1375 grams. And for those of you Yankee doodles who don't know what a gram is, one pound is roughly 454 grams. So keep that in mind. Okay, you'll do the math. Oh, 2.6 pounds, you suck. So if you're debating between those two lenses, I just, I can't picture ever wanting to bring the 100 to 400 due to the girth, the girth of it. Like this, the 100 to 400 will deter you from even leaving the house. That's how bad it is. It's barely different in image quality. I mean, slight edge. Autofocus about the same, stay worse. It's like, this is the sweet spot for Fuji. And it's not very long. It's 450 mil a quiv. You can get by with it. You're not gonna fill the frame with a bird, but you might if you can get some freak bird, one of those big ones that might eat you, and then you're in danger. So just brief pros and cons to the Fuji way of life if you're wild lifing before we move on to the next system. Decent stable, like actually really good. Better than Olympus, like might be top notch. I think Canon full frame with the Ibis dual lens stay better, but Fuji close. Autofocus, not great. It's okay, it's usable. Uh, my settings might be whacked, but you could probably with single autofocus point, put it on the bird, it'll get it eventually, but I noticed hunting with my settings. I'm working on it. You can manually focus, but one of the, something nobody talks about when they're reviewing gear is how is the manual focus? 70 to 300 is weird. At 70, manual focus is fine. It's just like a couple turns to get through the whole range. When you zoom into 300, it becomes like 15 turns. I don't understand what changes. Why is it so hard? So I noticed that I had a couple shots. I'm like, okay, what the hell? 15 turns later, 
We got the Hawk, barely. But Fuji is one of the few with the 240 frames per second. That is invaluable. That is beautiful beauty mode. So it's like, it's worth the struggles of the autofocus is just 240 frames and 4K 60p with good IBIS and decent autofocus, somewhat ability to manually focus for pretty cheap and light. Best color science for wildlife, all the different film simulations. Screw F-Log for nature life. You got the classic nag. Oh, I want to turn it now. Bleach bypass for danger mode. Fuji, like they might be top of my list. I'm debating, totally debating diving right back into that system. Why did I sell it? All I had to do was buy the lens. Now I have to buy the whole system. Overpriced. No. Now moving on to Micro Four Loser Thirds. Panasonic's out, not only due to their autofocus, the pulsing, all that bullshit, but that stabe is actually not good. The 100 to 400, like dual stabe, worse than the Canon R that had no stabe with that 1800 mil, 800. I, I over exaggerated that lens. Not good. So Panasonic, you're out. Olympus, you're our savior for Micro Four Thirds. Decent stabe. I have a purchase, a purchase announcement. We got something on the way. It's the first thing on this list. The 70 to 75 to 300, it's coming to my house from Japan. I just bought it. We pounced. It has no stabe. It's going to be bullshit. But I'm borrowing that Fuji X-T4. Have to send it back. I have nothing now. So that, uh, it'll, it'll do us for now. So we're looking at Olympus EM1 Mark III. Just spring. Spring for the best. And we're waiting for the WoW cam. We'll talk a little bit about what's coming at the end of the video, like, oh, X-H2. Pretty much just those two, I ruined it. 75 to 300 is only 423 grams, less than a pound. That's the lightest system you can get. For the reach, a 150 to 600 equiv. 1,000 grams. One kilogram even, $1,948. That's not bad. That's the lightest you can get. Pros and cons to Olympus though. Stabe not perfect. It's IBIS only, no lens stabe. You need the dual, really. That hurts. Slow motion's only 120 frames per second, 1080p with single autofocus. So it's a back button. Can we get it? Boom, lock, then go. If the bird moves, oh, slowly out of focus. Oh. So much for that shot. It could work. Bit of a crop on it, which could help you. Decent, but it'll be sharp, good autofocus, somewhat respectable stay, but like worse than the Fuji, surprisingly, until you step it up a notch, which is like the 100 to 400, again, like we're talking three times the weight almost. 423 grams versus 1120. Ow. The whole setup, 1700 grams for three grand. I don't know about that. And you don't get sync stabe with it. It's just, it has lens stabe and you have IBIS. I don't know what they do together. Like Fuji seems like that's sync stabe. They're working together. The Tamron was out of the loop on that one. They're like, we have stabe. It's not talking to the IBIS though. They were fighting each other. They both bled to death. Your only other option is that 150 to 400. And I'm just saying I'm excluding primes. All those like professional 300 mil 2.8 like bullshit like that. I like the zoom. You need it. This is like mediocre wildlife here. We're not David Attenborough sit-ins. We're just chilling up for YouTube. Making fun out in nature. Just relax. Zooms are better. The 150 to 400. I don't understand this. $7,500 American. It's the most expensive setup you can get on my list, including all the full frame stuff. And it's heavy. 2455 grams. It's heavier than most things. And more expensive for Micro Four Loser technology. I don't get it. But it'll be good. Like nothing has that reach. 800 mil plus a 1.25 times teleconverter built in. Sync stabe on that one. But you pay for it. Unless this wow cam is wowzers. I, I wouldn't do it. 
So if you're debating that system, I lean towards just sticking with the 75 to 300. We'll see what the results are like. I'll make a video review of it, but probably not like professional, but decent enough. I think again, same with the Fuji, the jump to the 100 to 400 is just too much in cost and weight. When it comes to full frame, say you're in the Sony universe. I have a Sony a7S III. Why did I look over there? It's filming me. I'm a moron and the battery's about to die. Uh, I thought I could get through with 19% battery life. That was a lie. Your only real option is that 200 to 600 and it's the heaviest lens in the group of all lenses, 24 100 kilograms. I mean grams. Your setup's looking at 3109 grams with the Sony a7S III for $54.96. It's so heavy, like I just, I can't imagine it. You're not going to beat the quality. I bet you the stabe is not perfect. It's not like Canon level stabe. But man, 200 to 600 full frame look. 240 frames per second with autofocus, not bird detect. You have to go up to the ZV E10 to get that, apparently. When are we getting that firmware? What the fuck? Now the A7S III, probably not the best wildlife camera, but that's the one I have. And that's what I would use. But like A7 IV, probably better because it has 4K60 with a big crop. But then you're not full frame. Obviously, and you're holding full frame weight and you spent full frame money to get a crop sensor value. I don't know. I don't know about that. It's kind of fun that you can crop in, but if you're buying that and holding that, you want the full frame look and then you're not getting it. So A7S III, all the way. FX3 maybe. No. No viewfinder. It's actually helpful to have that viewfinder. Now that I'm doing that, it's like you can find the bird so much easier because you're like actually pointing in the right direction when it's flippy screen to the left and you're like, where is that? What? Okay, that branch is making a V there. Ah, fuck, I, where is it? You l obviously lost your moment in that panic. So the viewfinder helps A7S III. Finally, I could use that fantastic best viewfinder in the business. So that could be a decent setup. I just, I can't bring myself to buy that 200 to 600, I want to test it first and see if I could even bring it somewhere. It's so heavy. The last system worth mentioning, there's a couple freak honorable contenders that we might mention later, but it's hard to even go here. It was supposed to be the R5C until the cripple hammerings just dented our hearts. That sucks. Really, I don't like Canon as an option. Say you get the R5. Amazing bird detect, eye detect of the birds. Good stabe, autofocus, like fantastic, but the files, can you even edit them? I can't, that's a deal breaker for me. The R5 and R6 have uneditable files. That is unfortunate. So what are your options? The R5C, you lose the stabe. And I've done the test with the 800 mil Tony 11, and it has stabe with the EOS R, which only had digital stabe, it wasn't good enough. It was shaky. It was somewhat usable, but not handheld. That's what you want to be. You don't want to be out in the woods with a tripod. Bring in a tripod? Or you, how'd you even get to the woods? You should have rode a bike or something. Asshole, how you tripod on a bike? Give me a break. So if you have a supercomputer built by your neighbor's autistic nephew, that somehow he made, made it with Legos, then, okay, R5, and you get the 100 to 500. We're talking a total weight of 2108 grams. Comparable, somewhat, it's almost the same as the Fuji with the 100 to 400. It's too big, it's too stupid, but you have full frame now. That's the ultimate, that's the goal. Or, you get the 100 to 400, this is a budget lens, it's very light, 635 grams. Your total weight would be 1373 grams. That's comparable to the crop sensors. A couple hundred grams more than the Fuji, it, totally doable. But if you're on the R5, that's only 400 mil, that's not much. You're not gonna fill a frame with a damn thing. So, but, life hack, you get the EOS R, 
you could do this. We're talking 700 mils in 4K. Stabe won't be that great, but somewhat doable. And if you go enhance Stabe, 1,000 mils. You have a 100 to 1,000 for almost the cheapest and lightest of this whole group. 1295 grams, 2348, probably cheaper. Used EOS R, no one's offering me a deal, but you could find one, probably. It's just then you don't have any slow-mo. It's 720p manual focus only. That's gonna hurt bad. It's not great. It's not even better than the Fuji at that point. I would lean Fuji, unless you're already in the system of Canon. And that's a sad joke, if you are. Now just a couple honorable mentions. I'm sure you could get by with some sort of Nikon Z50 with that new 100 to 400. I don't, I doubt the stay will be good enough. With the Z6 it would be, but then you're only 100 to 400. Kind of gross. You could go something stupid like the C70. You get the crop, but then your stabe is similar to an EOS R, and your autofocus is worse. And the R5C, same autofocus as the C70, cinema level, should be better, but it's not. It's worse. Interesting, Cripple Hammer. Thank you, Monkey Pixels, for pointing that one out. Sony APS-C has too much rolling shutter, in my opinion. You're just going to get pure jello footage. Otherwise, that 70 to 350 might be decent. With the ZV-E10 and digital stabe, that's bullshit. There's no viewfinder. A6600, it would suck. So to sum it up, there's all the weights and the cost of what we have now, and then we'll talk about what's coming in the future. If it's me, I want the Fuji for that 240 frames per second and the magical Fuji look. I prefer that good stabe, I like it. I prefer it over the Olympus that I just bought, but that was a much smaller investment for me. It was like 400 and probably 50 more for the custom fee from Japan. So 450 Canadian for a lens that's 150 to 600. It's like, okay, I'll dabble around in that, compare it, might have to sell it off. But I would probably lean XT4 70 to 300, hoping that the X-H2 just solves all our problems. Better autofocus, 480 frames per second maybe. Stacked, just fix your problems basically. Make manually focusing easier and autofocus much better. Animal eye detect. If you can't get the Fuji Eileen Olympus, just because they're also cheap and good stabe, very light, even lighter, but like if you push up to that 100 to 400, now you're heavier than the Fuji and more expensive. And you might have to be there. So I don't know what that 75 to 300 is going to be like. So I don't know. If you're a bodybuilder with a car and nothing else mattered, just image quality, then the Sony way, I would prefer it. If I was just driving to a spot and then I pull out my camera and we go for a walk and yeah, it's heavy, but we're going back to a car. I'm talking about like riding a scooter somewhere, thing in the backpack, pulling it out, walking with it and a scooter. The convenience level actually matters quite a bit being lightweight. So crop sensors have their place. Full frames ridiculous. I'm actually surprised Sony has the heaviest of the lenses. Usually their lenses equivalent to everything else are the lightest and tiniest. What would you do there for the wildlife? And the reason I didn't mention the Canon R3 is it's just too pricey, it's too high end. That would be your ultimate thing maybe, but you really gonna spend that much? Couple shots of a pigeon? Get a life. And last one, if Blackmagic had Ibis, get some sort of long lens on that thing, you're manually focusing, it's all cinema, all technique. You might have the best look ever, but you don't, and we can't, so. What do you think? Post your best combinations down below. What am I missing? I think these are the best for practicality, lightweight, light cost, and decent enough image quality. I think I missed nothing, but I could have, I probably did. So let me know down below after thumbing up the video and buying everything through my affiliate links.
That's too many cameras to create links for. That takes too long. I don't have time for that shit. Buy something from my shop. T-shirt. Not this one. Unless you like bad health advice. I'm going to go. How you doing? Good? Subscribing? No? Understandable? Checkmate to you. Mm -hmm.